1975 FMC Motorhome, 247 horsepower, 4,000 RPM. This would have cost $20, $27,000, and it was a, uh, I mean, you could find everything in these things. This was your house in your RV. It's a 1900 wood electric truck, delivery at the speed of electricity. It's the equivalent of four horsepower. 1800 new concept the department store offered. Urban shoppers expanded services included free delivery in horse-drawn wagons. In 1898, New York City's B. Altman and Company began to experiment with electric trucks, including this one that made twice the daily trips from a warehouse to a distribution center. The huge investment and the new technology helped B. Altman improve services and perhaps save money over time. Roadway Express. It's 1974 Ford C700. 169 horsepower, 3600 RPM. It cost $8,000 for this truck. That old truck driver's bumper sticker is largely true. By 2005, the trunks hauled nearly 70% of total freight tonnage in the United States. This truck carried over 44 million pounds of freight, but not all at once. Between 1974 and 1990, it hauled P&D, pickup and delivery services among industries and businesses around Lexington, Kentucky. Roadway Express operated 3,200 similar Ford trucks in other cities. This right here is a 1906 Rapid Bus. The moneymaker possibilities Rapid suggested for its bus included sightseeing and shuttling travelers between railroad stations and hotels. It's styled like horse-drawn vehicles of its era, even though automobiles were begging to move away from the horseless carriage look. The, rap the Rapid is the direct ancestor of modern sport shuttles and city tour buses and its top speed of 15 miles per hour was rapid in 1906 it made 24 horsepower weighed 3,000 pounds and its price tag was two thousand dollars well 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 children bluebird number one 1927 bluebird school bus if you attended a rural school in 1920s you were traveling in one of these or hard horse strong carriage one or the other 20 horsepower 1600 rpm weighed 3157 pounds it's a 1935 stagecoach travel travel trailer 1935 stagecoach travel trailer Henry Ford gave his gave this trailer to his friend Charles Lindbergh in 1942. Lindbergh was an American hero, famous for making the first solo nonstop flight across the Atlantic. Charles and his wife Anne used it as a home on the road and as a spare room and a study at home. Anne wrote the what is that the steep the steep ascent here and Charles wrote portions of the Pulitzer Prize winning book The Spirit of St. Louis. Price tag brand new was seven hundred ninety-five dollars, and it weighed twenty-seven hundred and fifty pounds. What do we got here? Jerry Unser Motor Company, nineteen fifty-six Ford F one hundred. For decades, most race cars, even at the top levels of racing, were transported on open trailers pulled by pickup trucks or station wagons. Drivers and mechanics sometimes slept in the vehicles or inexpensive motels. It's a far cry from today when race cars ride in huge trailers equipped with shops and drivers travel by plane in luxurious motorhomes. This vehicle made 245 horsepower at 4,500 RPM and its price tag was $1,577. And here is a very, 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 very important room. 
lift these brace to break this to feel the weight difference. Bracing brake pads. It's a Ford GT brake system. Ford GT racing brake system. Says uh, lift these brake discs to feel the difference. Cast iron brake disc, carbon ceramic brake disc. That's heavy. It is lighter, but it is heavy too, though. Yeah, the carbon ceramic is definitely a lot lighter. It's a Ford GT clay model. How about it? Ford GT cutaway. Man, this thing is so nice. It's crazy sexy. It's a twin turbo V6 engine. As far as I know, yeah, it's 647 horsepower. It's actually more powerful. The road car versus the race car. This is a cutaway half race car, the half road car. Uh, this race car, the race uh, regulations limit horsepower. So the road car, 647 horsepower, is actually more powerful than the racing engine that's in the race car. Multi-dynamic suspension, spool, valve dampening, improve racing GT's handling. They're more predictable than traditional shocks. Twenty four hour Le Mans. This is called the Ford nine nine nine. There was an eighty horsepower inline four cylinder engine. Look at that radiator. Look how massive that thing is. You had to be moving to get any kind of airflow through that. There's Ken Block versus uh, Barney Oldfield. Uh, 2012 Ford Fiesta ST 650 horsepower inline 4 122 cubic inch engine it's a hybrid function Hoon vehicle It's a Bonneville car. Bonneville Speedway, landscape made for speed, eight miles long. Bonneville salt flat feel.
1965 Coldenrod held a land speed record. Had held a land speed record for more than 25 years, it said. In November 1965, a flash of gold streak across Utah's Bonneville Salt Flats, 409.277 miles per hour, breaking a land speed record for four wheel driven vehicles. Its long, slim shape minimized the wind resistance, but it took clever engineering to pack four massive Chrysler engines and the machinery to drive all, ve- all wheels. Although other cars reached higher speeds while pushed by jets and rockets, Goldenrod held a record for traditional wheel driven until 1991. This race in the clock, land speed racing is about as simple as motorsport gets. One car at a time races down a straight several miles long. It's time to overcome some portion of distance, usually one mile. The goal is to reach the fastest average speed overall over that mile. There's no money to be made in land speed racing, and the crowds are mostly just other drivers awaiting their turns to compete. The official land speed records were kept as early as 1898. In the east, drivers went to beaches to make their record runs. In the west, they used dry lake beds. Midwestern drivers improvised Henry Ford set a speed record on a frozen lake in St. Clair in January 1904. But in the 1930s, drivers everywhere turned to the Bonneville Salt Flats in northwest Utah where an expensive or it were an expansive landscape accommodated surging speeds. A 1951 Betty Belly Tank Lakester. After World War II, hot rodders started using external fuel tanks from fighter planes as car bodies. The teardrop shape was ideal for speed runs on dry lake beds and Utah's Bonneville Salt Flats. This is one of the most innovative and successful tanks and was once the world's fastest. Californian Tom Beatty welded the tube frame designed his own independent rear suspension and was an early experimenter with supercharging. It had an Oldsmobile V8 overhead engine with 260 cubic inch and made 400 horsepower. The 1958 Moore Unser 650 horsepower 355 cubic inch Chevy small block overhead valve 151 inches long max speed of 155 miles per hour it's crazy to get 650 horsepower out of a 355 cubic inch but they do it I remember a gentleman back overseas that was talking about how our technology or, or how uneducated we are and how to make power. He could come over here and take one of our V8 engines and make twice the amount of power that we do just because we're behind on technology here where they're so advanced there. I don't know how true that is, but that just goes to show here is a 355 cubic inch making 650 horsepower and there ain't no supercharger on it. This right here is a 1935 Miller Ford. 150 horsepower, 113.213 miles per hour at its top speed. Ford V8 L head, 221 cubic inch, 1980 pounds. This right here is a uh, March 84 seat Cosworth. This makes 740 horsepower at 11,000 RPM. It's got a Cosworth V8, double overhead cam, turbocharged, 159 cubic inch, five speed manual, top speed of, or qualifying speed of 210 miles per hour. This is a 1972 McLaren M16A. See how everything got destroyed on this thing, other than 
the cockpit where the driver was at. Oh, good old Motorola Corvette. Good old GMAC Corvette. Win on a Sunday, sell on a Sunday. It's a 2001 Chevy Corvette C5R. This particular vehicle, 610 horsepower, 97.279 miles per hour is the average speed at the 2001 24 hours of Daytona. And it is uh, powered by a 427 cubic inch V8 overhead valve motor. Their cutouts. It's that 2011 Ford Fusion qualifier. what old drag cars used to look like. I winner. I winner. So this is what you do here. You come up and you push your you, you press start, right? Hold on a second. You come up and you press start. When you see the first light, you're pre-staged. When you see the second light, you're staged. You can go into deep staged as well, which will go past. This light will disappear, and then that light will be the only one lit up. That's deep staged. But when you get deep staged, that means you're on the border of pretty much red lighting. It's a way for you to get just a, just a tad bit closer to the finish line than your opponent, right? So we go up here, we push our buttons, and then you time it. On the third orange, you go. My reaction time was better. When you see the third orange, you go. Because you don't have enough time. To, if, you're, if, you're, if you're starting on green, you're already late. You have to predetermine. You, you have to guess ahead of time on that third light. When you see third orange, it's time to go. It's let it, let it off and go. Because by the time it hits green, you're too late. That light's faster than you. So you hit it. You red lighted. That you 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 went too early. So let's go again. I red lighted. Let's go again. I was about forty nine thousandths of a second faster. I got it. We got to go back down that other side. This is a 1988 Penske Chevrolet. I don't know if you guys want to see this or not, but here's a cutaway of uh, the in-car safety features.
This is the 1956 Chrysler 300B NASCARs. Uh, this was one of the NASCARs back then. And it was a 355 horsepower, 354 cubic inch V8. Nineteen sixty five Lotus Ford. This is a four hundred ninety five horsepower Ford V eight, two hundred fifty six cubic inches, and it had an average speed during the race of one hundred and fifty point six eight six miles per hour. This right here is a 1960 Meskowski, 400 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 92.369 miles per hour average. Winner of the winner of 13 100 mile championship races, 1960 to 1963, driven by A.J. Foyt. What is that, Mark? Mark Six? Nineteen sixty seven Ford Mark Four, I guess. I don't like my freaking symbol things. Just put the number. Put the number, jeez. Ford V8, 427, 500 horsepower, 5,000 RPM. This was a, you could literally take this car apart in pieces. That's how easy it was to just rip this car apart real quick. Every panel like unsnaps and comes off in sections. Mark IV. Says this was the first all American car and team to win the Le Mans 24 hour race for decades. Europeans had dominated sports car racing in cars with small, fast turning, high efficient engines. Americans typically used big, slower turning, less efficient V8 engines. This car's sophisticated chassis used aerospace techniques and its shape was refined in, uh, in a wind tunnel, but it's a but its big engine was based on the uh, Ford V8 used for stock car racing. 427. It's a 1906 Locomobile, old 16, 120 horsepower at 1,000 RPM, average race speed of 64.3 miles per hour. It had an inline four F head valves, 990 cubic inch. This is uh, quite interesting here. It's a 1901 Ford sweepstakes promoting business interest through racing. 26 horsepower at 900 RPM. And it was a horizontally opposed two atmospheric intake valves and mechanical exhaust valves, 539 cubic inch motor. Top speed of 72 miles per hour. The 1966 Ford Galaxy, 427 cubic inch, 500 horsepower. Average speed at 1968 Daytona 500 was 131.788 miles per hour. What a unit, man. What a unit. Almost dropped it. Yeah. 
55 Chevy hardtop up there. 1960 Chevy Corvair. Nineteen sixty six Toyota Corona, the nineteen sixty eight Mercury Cougar Coupe, six point five liter, three hundred and thirty five horsepower, three hundred ninety cubic inch. That up there is a Chrysler Newport, nineteen seventy three, hundred eighty five horsepower. 400 cubic inch motor cost four thousand six hundred ninety three dollars brand new we got a 1978 Dodge Omni here 75 horsepower 105 cubic inch motor three-speed automatic the old classic Explorer look at that beauty Wow 1991 Ford Utility Sport Utility Explorer. It had a V6 overhead cam, 244 cubic inches, 155 horsepower at 3,800 RPM. You could buy that brand new for 19,275. But they also came with a 5 liter as well. You could get that with a 5.0. I seen one the other day. It was like a 91 or a 92, and they were stripping it down for drag racing. They were going to gut it, turn it into a drag car. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. 1989 Honda Accord sedan. 98 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. 2,579 pounds. You can buy this car for 13,468. $13,460. And it had a 119 cubic inch four, four speed automatic. Woo! Look at that girl. That's my That's my truck right there. That is my truck right there. Wow, that's nice. Super nice truck. That's a 1998 Dodge Ram quad cab pickup. It made 245 horsepower at 4,000 RPM. It has a 360 cubic inch motor, four speed automatic. You can buy that truck brand new for $20,410 truck was made from 1981 to 2007 so, from 19 or not uh, 1981 to 2007 the best-selling vehicles in America were trucks still to this day they are I think it was like as of in 2018 of uh, 14 million vehicles sold 11 million were like SUVs and trucks Here's that 2002 Prius. 76 horsepower engine. 38 nickel plated hybrid batteries. 91 cubic inch motor. You buy this vehicle brand new for $19,995. So that 2018 Chevy Camaro ZL1 1LE. It's a 650 horse motor. 376 cubic inch supercharged, 191 mile an hour top speed. GM engineers tested the Camaro at Germany's Nuremberg racetrack where it lapped 12.9 mile circuit, 7 minutes, 16.04 seconds at an average circuit or 16.04 uh, seconds at an average speed of 106. 514 miles per hour it was the fastest time ever seen fastest time ever for a Camaro on that track and faster than supercars like the Ferrari 488 GTB and the Nissan GTR the Camaro had the fastest overall time in history of this class of car it's a 1932 Ford Cabriolet It's a 1934 Model A touring car. And 
This is a 1914 Ford Model T touring car. 1908 Ford Model S Roadster. It's a 1905 Ford Model B touring car. The story of Henry Ford Innovator. What makes an innovator? Innovators are curious. They're leaders as well as collaborators. They take risks, experiment, learn from failure. Innovators have a vision of the future. They shake things up long before he became a successful automaker. Henry Ford demonstrated these traits. 1903 Ford Model A runabout. It's uh, 2010 Edison 2. Zero to sixty in 14.2 seconds. Top speed about 100 mile an hour, horsepower 40. It's a one cylinder double overhead cam, turbocharged 15 cubic inch. Transmission is a six speed. Edison 2 designers rejected electric power because of the weight of the batteries they chose a one cylinder turbocharged motorcycle engine burning E85 fuel 85% ethanol 15% gasoline there's the push pins the nuts and bolts everything like that that we've seen we see now kind of where they came from the designs on how the sketches and stuff how things started and Kind of where we're at now. Concept car models. The GMX Stiletto concept. Above is the Packard Predictor concept. And this was Mazda's rotary engine primary used for this company's RX engines. This was uh, going to be one of their concepts, I guess. Called the RX44. The four bubbles on the roof are, vis are visual reference to four engine rotors and four passengers, thus the name RX-44. That would have been cool as hell, not going to lie. This would have been the 1962 Mustang Roadster Mustang 1 design as styling. Yeah, 109 horsepower V4. 60 degree V4, 91 cubic inch, four speed manual transmission. 1949 Volkswagen sedan. 1949 Ford sedan. Mira, yo sé caminar. It's a 1943 Willys Overland Jeep runabout. 1937 LaSalle Coupe. This one on a flathead V8s. 1932 Ford V8 engine. Simple. Nineteen twenty four Essex coach sedan at a inline six three speed manual thirty five horsepower nineteen twenty four Chrysler touring car nineteen o nine Model T Nineteen oh six model N. Nineteen oh three Holzman runabouts. 
And that is a 1906 Thomas Flyer touring car. Wow. This here is a 1903 Oldsmobile runabout. 1899 locomobile runabout. Nineteen oh one Columbia Victoria Electric eighty volt DC. See everything down there on the bottom. It's a eighteen ninety six third year runabout inline two F head valves, hundred and thirty eight cubic inch transmission three speed, made six horsepower, seven hundred pounds it weighed. This here is a 1865 Roper steam carriage. Sylvester Roper, Ro Roxbury, Massachusetts. Two cylinder steam engine, 3.75 inch bore by a 10 inch stroke. The McDonald's hamburger station. A and W sign is from the 1960s. McDonald's sign is a 1960 McDonald's sign. It's a 1956 Chevy Bel Air. Nineteen fifty one Studebaker Champion Starlight. Eighty five horsepower, twenty six hundred and seventy five pounds, two thousand dollar price tag, pretty much. Inline six, L head valves, hundred and seventy cubic inch transmission was a three speed transmission. There's this thing. Say, 2016 General Motors first generation self driving test vehicle. Like how they just cut holes in that and said send it. 